My name's Eric Wielander and welcome to Wendy Tech, a channel all about smart home tech in the Apple ecosystem. Today, we're gonna talk about the Lutron Cassetta wireless dimmer switch and how to use it in a four-way setup. And then we're gonna revisit a question that I asked in a previous video, which is, is Lutron Cassetta wireless the ultimate home kit lighting setup? I previously did a video of setting up the Cassetta wireless dimmer in a three-way switch configuration, uh, and that's where you would close off one end of the three-way switch and use uh, a wired dimmer switch on the other end. And so a three-way, if you can figure that out by what I just said, is actually where there's two switches. But then when you have a four-way setup, that's where you basically take a three-way setup and then insert a four-way switch or one or more four-way switches in the middle between those two three-way switches. And Lutron does make proper three-way wiring for their single switch, uh, but if you want the basic dimmer switch to work in a three-way, you're basically gonna have to close off all parts of the circuit down to one switch. So as I mentioned, you could take a three-way compatible Lutron switch and do proper three-way wiring on either end of the four-way switch and then close off each switch in the middle of the four-way setup. Uh, but that's not what I wanted to do. The switch box where I wanted my actual switch to be for this was where the four-way switch uh, is in my house and I wanted to close off the other two three-way switches. And I think this is a really nice way to go about it. If you ha uh, wanna just get a dimmer switch and have that control everything, you can pair up to like 10 Pico remotes with that dimmer switch so you can replace any other switches you want with Pico remotes and you'll still get the same functionality and then you'll be spending less. Now, of course, you could uh, close off any combination of these circuits if you really think about how a, a four-way switch works and then install the dimmer switch in any one of those. Essentially what we're doing is we're making it all one giant big circuit and then just using the dimmer switch to control the circuit at whatever part that makes sense for you. So the first step of course is to shut off the breaker and then from there you want to go and to the three-way switch spot that you want to close off and it's a little bit different than closing off three-way switch for the three-way setup. In this case, we wanna sort of get this three-way switch stuck in the on position or a, a specific position, just as if a switch was there. So we'll take one of the travelers and the load wire and merge those together. And then we'll also then just cap off the other traveler uh, just to sort of imitate the switch being stuck in one position. Now, the key here too is you'll wanna label these wires because if you or another person who has the home in the future needs to reference where do these wires go, it's extremely helpful to have them labeled. So from there, tape everything up and then stuff it back in the switch box. In my case, I'm gonna make this a two smart switch box in the future, uh, but I'm just gonna close it off today and then um, put a piece of electrical tape over the switch plate just to make sure no one you know, sticks their finger into that switch box for safety. Probably not up to code, uh, but hey, it'll work for the time being until I get, uh, get some more switches in there. So you also need to close off the other end of the three-way switch. And, and uh, in my case, I already did that in order to make room for another Lutron Cassetta wireless switch um, in another switch box. And now it's time to merge the four-way switch into one um, you know, controllable thing for the dimmer switch. Now, if you look at a typical four-way switch, you'll see two different colored screws. And oftentimes there'll be you know, one color on the top two and then one color on the bottom two. And you don't really need to fully understand we, where each of those are going in the four-way circuit, but it's key that, you know, which screws they're, they're screwed into. So. I would recommend going through before you do this, in case you ever need to or want to undo this, label which is the top left, the top right, the bottom left, the bottom right. And that way, if you ever get a basic four-way switch again, or maybe someday there's a smart four-way switch, you can swap it in easily by knowing the positions of those wires. But from there today, once you've labeled those, we wanna take the two top wires and merge those together, and then the two bottom wires and merge those together, and then you connect each one of those sections with one of the black wires from the dimmer switch. So then one part of the dimmer switch uh, circuit is, is controlling the top two wires and the bottom part of it, you know, another part is controlling the bottom two wires on the dimmer switch. So from there, just cap everything off, tape it up, 
and put it back in the switch box. In my case, I had to struggle a whole lot because there, there was a bunch of activity going on in that switch box between different conduit coming in for different reasons. Um, not really specific to this tutorial, but so it took me a good bit to just get everything to fit in there. Um, but you, so you might have to do that, but for me, I got it to work. So from there, of course, cut the breaker back on, make sure everything works, and then go through and add the switch to your home kit setup. And for me, I'm really excited because this main entryway light is a big, you know, obviously heavy traffic place in our home. And so be able to have that light automated um, for some future ideas I have that you'll probably see in future videos. I'm really excited to have that. Not to mention things like just my dinner time scene, I can like turn off the entryway lights, which is so nice to have. The other key advantage of Lutron and their basic dimmer switch that we installed today uh, is that it doesn't require a neutral wire. So, so many of these smart switches require a neutral wire, which is that white wire um, to give it electricity. And Lutron's been able to make their dimmer without a neutral wire. So if you're living in a, in a house where you have switch boxes without neutral wires, um, the Cassetta wireless dimmer switch might be your, maybe your only, but at least your best option, I think, um, for, for getting a switch that works. So I previously made a video where I talked about just the Lutron Cassetta wireless system in general, and uh, I only only installed two switches there and I was a little down on the system in general and I would say there is a learning curve to installing smart switches in a home if you've never done anything electrical but it's really not that difficult and I'd say if you're willing to invest just a little bit of time um, it's it's not that bad and I'm gonna be looking at some other smart switches as well in the future however um, just looking at Lutron's Cassetta Wireless, I think the setup in general uh, with their app and everything is, is a pretty good experience. I don't love, as I mentioned in that video, the tactile feedback on the Lutron Cassetta switches. I think for the premium level that Lutron generally tends to be, they could make the feel of those um, a little bit better. One other big downside besides the setup is just that you need to be sure you have light bulbs that are compatible with dimmers and or the Lutron switches. And you know, they have a great website to do that. So, you know, if you're if you're willing to make sure your light bulbs are, are compatible, which a whole bunch are, but some are not, uh, just, just make sure that, that that's there. I've come around to really liking the way their switch plates look with their switches. I think that is really nice. And I think that the Pico remote concept is a really Really cool one where you can put switches for different lights even where there isn't necessarily a, a, a circuit or a switch box um, you know you can just mount a Pico remote on the wall with a switch plate and again you know comparing them to smart bulbs it's just way easier to have a physical switch in the wall that anybody tech savvy or not can use my wife and I were uh, blessed to have a baby boy in December and uh, we have you know grandparents other people coming over sometimes to watch him and it's just really easy. They don't have to, you know, be added to our smart home or or have special access to control lights. They just go to the switch and turn it on. I'm overall a lot more positive on the Lutron system now that I've been using it for a while and really get the hang of it. My first impressions were a little iffy uh, given the challenges there are potentially to install the switches. So let me know down in the comments what you think of Lutron. Have you installed a bunch of their switches or maybe another brand that you really think I should try? I have my eye on Leviton Decora. I think they look pretty cool. Um, so I might be trying some of those out on this channel. Subscribe if you don't want to miss any future videos of smart home tech in the Apple ecosystem. Uh, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Thanks again so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.